So our next topic is force vibration. In the previous sessions, we have seen a free vibration, and within the free vibration, uh, how uh, no the damped vibration. So, so how the system responds when you introduce a damping into the system. But uh, uh, those free vibrations are actually the idealized case. But in the actual scenario, there is no free vibration. But uh, in its turn, all these vibrations are experienced by some exciting external exciting force. So whenever there is an external exciting force that will cause the vibrations in the system, then it's a called as a force vibration. So I mean, as a if you consider any mechanical system, so from where does this mechanical mechanical uh, for external vibration will come from? So in in mechanical system, there are so many types of uh, exciting forces like uh, unbalance. So, uh, uh, how, what is this unbalance? So, this is either either due to the different components attached to a particular part which are not balanced, or in, if you if you take any simple and general case, in, for example, this is a circular disc, and uh, this is a geometrical center. So, when and uh, if the center of gravity of this particular circular disc is coincident with the geometrical central O then there won't be any unbalance in this case. But in this case, the if the center of gravity of this particular you know, uh, disk is away from the geometrical center, then automatically when you rotate this disk, then it will produce some unbalanced force. Mm -hmm. And in turn, this unbalanced force will act as a you know external exciting force if you attach this, if you attach this you know rotating disk to any other system. So this will in, you know, this will cause the vibration due to the external excited force, and uh, one more you know um, widely observable example is the exciting force developed by the reciprocating part in the mechanical system. Reciprocating part. So um, these type of you know um, exciting external exciting forces will be induced in our daily mechanical system so we need to so we need to know how to formulate the equation of motion in that case and uh, we need to know the solution for that equation of motion and uh, at the end we need to know the amplitude of the vibration the simple spring mass system with a damper here and uh, we we have applied uh, some external force here this is the force applied externally so that uh, the system is you know undergoing some vibration so you know before applying this uh, force ft if you consider if you consider system at the equilibrium position then in that case we know already that you know the m if you take m this one then this will be having the force mg inertia force in the downward direction so that it would be it would be compensated by the spring force K into X. We have already seen this one. So, you no know, spring force is proportional to K into X. Here, there is no damping force acting in the upward direction because this is an equilibrium position. That means the motion of the system is a zero. So, when the system is zero, that means P into X that becomes zero because here the velocity, there is no velocity because this is at the equilibrium position. So in this case what happened mg equal to kx. So when mg equal to kx, we we have already seen that whenever the g mg equal to kx then we can neglect the, you know okay this is an not even kx actually this is a delta so initial displacement. So whenever mg equal to k into delta so we can neglect the terms involving g and as well as delta. So instead of considering here the equilibrium position we are directly going to the next step what is that next step so here what i did is i have a given an initial displacement x in case of a free vibration but whereas here because of the externally applied force there is a there is a you know displacement of x to the uh, you know system so because of this displacement x you know the m x dot or the inertia force you know given to the mass is acting in the downward direction and uh, the 
damping force is acting in the upward direction that is the c to exert we have seen how we derive this one so and then uh, the spring force k into x so so in this condition we know from the newton formula that is f equal to m into voila acceleration here m into acceleration equal to m into x double dot but here x double dot we have considered in the downward direction that means the forces which are acting in the downward direction are positive and the forces which are acting in the upward directions are negative so here the damping and spring forces are acting in the upward direction that means here m into x double dot equal to negative of damping force that is the c into x dot and again a negative of a spring force k into x and apart from this here we forgot to mention this uh, external externally exciting force that is the uh, f into t here f of t then here we need to write uh, f which is a function of uh, time t so this equation can be written as m x double dot plus uh, c x dot plus k x equal to f of uh, t so when f of t that means externally excited force is zero then this becomes uh, simply you know free vibration which is having the damping in the system so in that in that case we know how to solve the equation but here yeah, along with that we have a uh, one yeah, you know co force term also these type of equations generally can be considered as a two part so the part one is called as a homogeneous solution so let's say this is a it stands for homogeneous this is a homogeneous solution homogeneous homogeneous means whenever i put you know zero instead of f of t and if i solve the differential equation by considering f of t as a zero then that solution is called as a homogeneous solution and uh, there is one more solution that is a particular solution what is that particular solution the particular solution is by considering f of t instead of considering f of t as zero if i considered f of t then the solution obtained from that equation is called as a particular solution so in the both the cases in the both the cases these solutions are satisfying this equation this given equation both the cases for example such as the equation as one in the both the cases this solution and as well as this solution are satisfying this one and in the initial itself we have considered that whenever the differential equation is linear then the solution the total solution the total solution of this you know differential equation is the simply the superimposition or the combination of the two solution that means that is a x of h and the x of a particular solution that means not only these individual solutions are satisfying the equation even the combination of the both the equation also should satisfy the equation one